Uh, welcome to live streaming events on StreamYard. My name is Sam Langford and I am a science communicator and public engagement consultant. So today we're going to talk, um, we're going to go through a tutorial of how to use StreamYard, um, which is a platform you can use to broadcast on your browser through social networks. Um, it's uh, something that offers a free option um, and you can try that to to see whether you want to use the free option or use the premium plans to access a few more features. Now, depending on the platform you're using and where your followers are, StreamYard allows you to add a destination for up to six different platforms. Now, these platforms include Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Periscope, which is linked to Twitter, um, and Twitch. So lots of different places that content can go out onto. Um, if you want to use Facebook, you can choose to live stream to uh, profiles, groups, pages, or a combination of these as well. Um, this also applies to LinkedIn users, uh, where you can choose to live stream to your profiles, your page, or a combination of them as well. So StreamYard also allows uh, users that prefer using RTMP, which is real-time messaging protocols, and platforms such as Livestream. Um, and that was something that was recently acquired by Vimeo uh, to air your program live. So I'm going to get StreamYard up. I'm going to show you how it works. And then we're going to go through a tutorial of it working in action. And here we are. So this is what StreamYard looks like. Uh, when you log on, if you're logged in, um, there are a couple of different ways for you to get through. Uh, when you log in, you will want to create a broadcast. Uh, creating a broadcast, which can either be a live broadcast that is brand new um, using live footage, or they've recently added on a feature where you can use pre-recorded video as well. Um, so something you've previously created that you can upload. So I have a whole bank of previously recorded videos in here, which I could restream if I wanted. Or you can upload a video that's on your local drive as well. Now, when you want to create a broadcast, you would click new and it gives you the option for the different destinations that you have linked with your account. Now, I have a whole range in here, including the, the Natural History Consortium's Festival of Nature Facebook account. You can see I've also got YouTube accounts and Periscope, which means that the stream would go out live onto Twitter and a Twitch stream as well. You would click on one and it gives you the chance to um, put a title to tell people what it's all about. And then you can schedule it for later if you want to. Um, when you do that, it will give you the option to add a thumbnail image, which is how it would be displayed to your audience on Facebook, or if this is on somewhere like uh, YouTube, the um, holding slide on the YouTube stream as well. Uh, you can then schedule a start time, uh, which you don't have to do it for the future. It can be something you're just going live right now and you put out right now, or you can schedule something for the future as well. Um, and these times are all, uh, at least like on the users that I'm using in GMT. Um, so you don't need to move it for other time zones. So you would then create that broadcast and it will take you into your broadcast studio. Now I have a, a example of one here, which is the communicate test event. I'm going to enter the studio. It then gives you the, the chance to choose your microphone and your camera um, and to tell you whether your microphone is working or not. Um, if you click on the settings button here with cam and mic, it will give you the chance to choose different types of cameras that you want. Um, so this is the camera that I would want to use and is also being shown on uh, Hopin as well. But you may notice that Hopin has flipped my camera view. Um, so this is not what my camera is actually showing on Hopin. The view on my shared screen on StreamYard is the actual orientation. I'm not sure why Hopin does that. So back to StreamYard. Um, so that is the camera. You can also change the microphone that you're, you're, you're using and you can check whether or not it's been picked up and choosing tests as well. So if I played that, I'm getting some audio coming through. So I know that it is uh, going to come through when I go into the studio itself. I won't bother with green screen because I don't have a green screen um, in order for us to show you how that works. You add a display name 
um, which I'd always recommend having uh, the pronouns in there if you're comfortable doing so. And I've also added in my Twitter handle as well. And that means that it will display like this on the screen. So let's actually get into the studio. So this is a preset studio that I made earlier, uh, just like Blue Peter. At the moment, I am not in the stream at the bottom left. We have me um, faded out a little bit, which means I'm in the studio, but no one can see me if we were to be live. This is the holding slide that would be shown on YouTube. Um, and what I can do is show you what it looks like on YouTube. I don't want that. I want to get you the link to YouTube, which I'll pop into the hop in chat um, if you want to go and have a look. What's got a question coming in? Uh, Mike, you're just asking, can you broadcast to more than one platform simultaneously? Yes, yes, you can. Um, so you can have it onto multiple different platforms. Most recently, I was doing this to uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter all at the same time, and it goes out synchronously all at the same time. Um, so that isn't isn't a problem. Uh, that is with the paid version. With the free version, they limit it to two at any one time. Um, and I'll go over some of the paid options later on. Um, but yes, uh, you can broadcast to more than one platform at a time. Right, back to here. Uh, so I've popped a YouTube link in there. Uh, that is what it would look like on YouTube. If you want to keep it open, because we are going to go live in just a second, um, please make sure you have that page muted, otherwise you're going to get double layers of audio. So I'll go over the user interface uh, for uh, what we see here. We can edit what we've got. I have named this the communicate test event, I'm gonna stay with that. And because it's on YouTube, I can add the privacy for the link. So it can be a publicly available video, which means that anyone on YouTube can find it quite easily if they wanted to. They won't find this one if I was to make it public, but they, they could if they knew exactly what to search for. Unlisted, which means that um, I can send uh, I can send a link to you and you can get access to it, but you could also find it in some of YouTube's uh, mail outs. They will include events like this in mail outs, but it's not publicly advertised to everyone who logs on to YouTube. And then there's private, which means that only the people who are sent the link can get access. At this point, you can also change the, the image that's displayed on the thumbnail, and you can also change the start time if you have to change that as well. Um, it's worth mentioning that YouTube um, as one of the places to stream to, you don't have to start at the scheduled start time. Um, you don't have to do that for Twitch. Or you don't have to do that for Twitter. But Facebook won't allow you to start any later than 10 minutes after your scheduled start time. So if you think you're going to be late, then move the start time as soon as you possibly can. Right. That's the edit. The screen option down here, um, at the moment, this is what the, the public would see. Um, even though I'm in the studio, even if we were to click live just now, they wouldn't see me, they wouldn't hear me because I'm not part of the stream. In order to become part of the stream, in the bottom left, I hover over my face and click add to stream. And there we go, I, I appear on the screen. I can then change the orientation. I won't be able to because there's only one of me on screen just now. But if you have multiple people on screen, you can change the orientation by clicking these different logos uh, buttons down here. So this one here would allow us to be two inset videos side by side. This one here stretches the, stretches us to be quite close together and it doesn't look very nice. So I would recommend not really using that one. And then these other options here are for if you want one of your uh, presenters to be the, the main focus. This one here is if you want to have a screen share and your presenter side by side, but the presenter still to be quite large. And then this one here is if you want to share screen and have multiple presenters on screen. And the last one being, you still want your presenters to be heard, but you only want the shared screen to be seen. The other option for how you can change how your presenters look on the screen is by clicking this button, which is the solo layout. So the solo layout allows you to have just one presenter on screen, but everybody else who is added to the stream still able to be heard if they're speaking. So that is the solo layout. At the bottom here, we have the, the mute and the stop camera, which are the same as you would expect on other platforms as well. So if I hit stop cam, it turns my camera off. 
if I hit mute, you'll still be able to hear me and hop in, but I'm muted on StreamYard. I'm going to come back to StreamYard to, see if, uh, to hop in, see if there's any questions. Nope, we'll go back into StreamYard. We also have a share screen function, which is similar to the way that Hopin works. Hopin recently acquired StreamYard, so their, their functionality is fairly similar. Um, it allows you to share a video file, which is directly from your drive, or share screen. And again, it will give you some tips on how best to do that. And like Hopin, it allows you to share your entire screen, a window, or just something from a Google Chrome tab. Um, which is what I'm doing in Hopin just now. I'm only sharing that Google Chrome tab. If you're sharing something with audio, you need to make sure you hit that share audio button as well. So that is how it looks on your screen. Some of the other options on the right-hand side um, are really good ways to interact with your audience. The comments function, I'll show you in just a second when we go live. Banners are things you can make appear on the screen. Um, this is what we call a ticker banner, which means I have uh, written in welcome to communicate 2021 and hit scroll across the bottom ticker banner which means if i hit the show button i get this really nice professional looking little banner that scrolls across the bottom now you could add in things like um join in the conversation using the hashtag communicate 21 or tell people ask us a question using the comments it's a really good way for you to interact with the audience and get them to feed back um, in some way. And you can create multiple of these as well. So you can have these for individual things that you want to go to your audience. Click it, hide a button again, and it goes away. So banners, great way for you to interact with your audience. The brand is the way that your um, output looks on screen. So at the moment, I don't have my name appearing. But if I scroll down to the bottom of brand and hit show display names, it makes it appear on screen. And then I can change how it looks on the screen. At the moment, I'm using the bubble option, but you can hopefully see that there are a couple of different options in here as well. I really like the bubble one. I think it's the cleanest looking. You can also add logos onto the screen. So StreamYard have their own. If you click this button here, it will make your logo appear on the top right-hand side. And um, that just comes with the software but you can also add in your own. So there's one for Festival of Nature, or if you want people to scan something and go to another website, you could add in a QR code. Very, very easy to upload. Um, upload, and it just comes from your drive. So those are your logos. Overlays are other ways that you can add things onto the screen. I don't tend to use these, but if you have like a really nice brand that you want to display, then this is a really good way to do it. This could be like the logo of your um, organization and then uh, the title of what you're talking about. Um, those are some really nice things to add in if you really wanted to. Okay, another question on the board. My mic is really clear. Okay, we'll come back to the microphone as well in a little bit. Um, so that is the, the, the basic things when it comes to brand. You can also have a couple of different types of brand in here. And these are a couple that I have. Um, so you could set them up for individual projects. So I have one in here for the Festival of Nature because I previously worked with the Natural History Consortium on that. But then some of the other projects that I work on. So having those color schemes set up, the video clips added in, and the thumbnails are ready to go. Um, and you can also see that it takes away my name. I will go back to the fifth little nature one there. Uh, the last thing that I'll show before we're going to go live, um, and you can watch what it looks like on YouTube, are video clips. You can add video clips on that mean that when I hit this button, it will appear on screen and override everything else that appears. So this is a 30 second countdown. I won't make it play the whole way through, but you get the idea that this allows me to have uh, something on screen to tell my audience things are about to start, get excited and join in. So if you have the YouTube, uh, link open and um, if you go there there is a 30 second delay i'm going to click the go live button and that will mean that the youtube will start playing in about 30 seconds um, and that way you'll hopefully be able to get an idea of how it looks over on youtube so to go live in the top right hand side 
you hit the go live button, but you have to hit it twice. So it means that you've got a fail safe. Hit it once, it says ready to go live, and then hit the go live button and it loads for just a second. And we're now live on YouTube. Um, so we have a live stream, which should be starting in about 20 seconds over on YouTube. I'm gonna see how it's going. And there we go, it's live on the stream that I can look at. Um, and I can do a couple of things to, to change how it looks. I can see that some of you are watching. Um, in the top left, I have this live viewer number, so I can tell how many people are watching live. We can look at how long the stream has been going on for as well, which is really nice to know. Um, and if we were to imagine that, let's start with no one on screen. Imagine we're just going to go live for the first time. I'm going to take myself off. And this would be the original, the original view. We'd have this uh, background, and then I'm going to play a countdown to get us started. We'll go for the Festival of Nature one because it's really nice. Um, so we've gone live, I then press this button. And hello, we are live. Uh, so what I did there is I originally had, I'll remove myself, I originally had this slide, I then play the video, and whilst the video is on, I change the background to be a blank version of this image, which removes the bubble images, meaning it looks like this. And then whilst the video is still playing, I also add myself into the stream. And that way you get a very smooth transition between the video playing and then me appearing on the screen. It looks seamless. It makes it feel very professional. And at that point, we can do whatever it is we're going to do. Um, if you are on YouTube, could you type a comment into the chat? You can say whatever you like. Say like, hi, my name is. Um, type that into the YouTube stream. And I will see it in just a second. So Duncan, Duncan has said hi, and I can bring that into the stream. There we go, someone, someone being very literal and saying, whatever you like, I can bring it into the stream. So these comments here will appear no matter where they're being posted. So if they're posted on the Facebook, on the Periscope, on the Twitch, on the YouTube stream, they will appear here. And they will have a logo at the bottom right of the profile picture that tells you where they're commenting from. And if you click on it, it brings it onto the screen. Now, this is a really nice way in order to show your audience you're listening to them, you're bringing them in to participate in the presentation. And you want to make sure that you get rid of it afterwards. So this is a really nice way to, if you want your audience to ask you a question, if you're interviewing someone else and you want to um, encourage the audience to ask a question alongside it, they can comment and you can bring it in like this. It works really, really well. So we'll get rid of that again. So I'm not going to do much more when it comes to the, the live stream. Um, the last thing is the private chat. So the private chat is what it sounds like. This is whoever is in your stream um, is able to uh, talk together using Messenger without it being publicly viewable. Um, so no one else can see it. Um, yeah, so this is how StreamYard works. It's a very, very nice piece of software that allows you to create really professional looking events. I'm going to end the broadcast now. And that means we'll, we'll end broadcast on uh, YouTube. But the way that I'll do that is I have this button in the top right, hit end broadcast, and then end broadcast again. And that will end the broadcast. I've said end broadcast too many times. And then you can say whether it went good or bad. I think that went good. I'm not going to give them feedback just now. Um, and that is that is it. Um, when you are done, you then just click the leave studio button and to leave the studio. So if you have got um, guests and that's the best way for them to do it. Now, this is the the presenter view or the host view. Um, so if someone else was to join, I would be able to see them in the bottom of my screen. Um, the host is the only one who can allow uh, other presenters to come onto the screen. 
Um, if you're a guest, you can only see yourself. You don't see who else is in the room until you're brought on the screen. And in order to join, there is an invite button. The invite button provides you with a link which you send to someone, they click it, and it brings them in in exactly the same way that I came in. But just when they get here, they have less functionality. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And right, I'm going to see what other questions we've got. Uh, first, I'll go for Rachel's question, which was, your mic is really clear and I can't hear background sound. Uh, what microphones do you recommend for streaming? Um, the one that I am using is one that it has been very popular over the past year, which is a Blue Yeti, um, which has served me really, really well. It's an omnidirectional microphone that has allowed me to, to get rid of quite a lot of the background noise. I'm also in quite a small room with quite a lot of furniture in it, which helps to dampen the noise around. I've got doors shut, windows closed, curtains curtains drawn as well, which helps to dampen that noise. So Blue Yeti is a really good. There's Elgato Waves are very good. Um, but quite a lot of them, even the ones that are attached to headphones, can still give you really good um, audio quality. Um, ones on headphones will rattle around a little bit, and you sometimes get a little bit of that interference. Um, but I would recommend, if you have a little bit of budget, it's around £120, £130, I think it's cost me at the time, to get hold of a Blue Yeti, which is just a USB microphone um, attaches to, to most laptops um, to, to just plug and go. Have you broadcast from events with a live audience? Um, so is that thinking of like a hybrid style event? Um, as of yet, no, I haven't, um, purely because of the, the pandemonium that we're still living in. Um, you could still do it. Um, it would just take a bit of thought on how the setup would look. Um, how many cameras would you want to have? How would the sound look? So you probably wouldn't want just one camera on a whole audience and all of your speakers if you had multiple speakers. Um, you'd maybe want to make sure that it was um, a little bit more focused. Uh, so those hybrid style events are still in the process of coming together. I think you can see that the, the Natural History Consortium team are doing a really good job of having that in-person um, event that we're doing uh, with Savita on the main stage. Um, that is a, a hybrid style event that we're, we're starting to put together. But personally, so far with an audience, no, it's not something that I've done. Uh, you're also asking Nicola, can more than one person be hosting the session? Um, yes, that is possible. Um, you need to give them the permission to do that. Um, so essentially, if you have a, a, an account that you own, I own my account, I can give other people access to it by telling them the email address that it's associated with. When they type that into the login, I get sent an email for a friend's code. I then send them the code and they get the admin access. It's as simple as that. Um, and then they can use a, a separate camera, a separate laptop or device, and still have that host functionality. Um, so I've hosted events. Uh, I regularly host an event with two other people where we all have the same host functionality. Um, so yes, you absolutely can do that. Um, what I'm going to do very quickly um, is show you show you an event in action um, that I ran several months ago with someone from the Natural History Museum in London. Um, this should be it, and hopefully you can see in here, it says it's not valid, that is valid. Let's try that again. So this is this is an event that I ran myself with uh, someone from Natural History Consortium. I have this nice little intro video, which goes on for about 10 seconds. And you can see there's a difference here that I don't have the same light setup or the same camera at this point, so it's not quite as high quality. Um, but we do have that video at the beginning that plays, which allows me the time to put myself on screen. And then when the video ends, I arrive on screen. 
I then we move along a little bit to about here. And this is the, the view you would get if you have the two presenters on screen. So in this case, um, I'm interviewing Khalil uh, about the work that he does at the Natural History Museum in London. Um, so just a, a very, very slick way to make something look really quite professional um, and to make it look really appealing to, to watch and interact with. So I'm going to stop sharing. Um, this was a very, 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 very quick run through of how StreamYard works. Um, there's not much more that I want to go into um, at this point because it, it makes more sense for you to go and play with it yourself um, if you wanted to go and do that. Um, in terms of how much it costs, um, it's quite a, a low cost piece of software that people can use. It's quite intuitive in order to get started with it as well. So I obviously said that there's a free version which allows you to have only the StreamYard branding. You can't put your own stuff in there um, and up to six people on screen I pay for the basic version, which is the most popular, which is listed as uh, $25 per month, which works out about 18 pounds GBP. Um, and it means that you can add your own branding. I have unlimited like length of streaming and I can have up to 10 people on board. Um, so that's actually a quite decent price for the amount of things that you get out of it. There's then a business plan, which adds even more um, functionality. I've never used it. I've never had the, the, the reason to use it. Um, what else am I missing? There's something else. Yes, once you've finished with your stream, StreamYard will hold on to the recording, which, yes, you can send it out to somewhere like YouTube and it will live forever as long as you allow it to stay on YouTube. But you can also download the stream as well. So you have a, a copy of the file for whatever reasons you want to have it. Um, but yes, this has been a run through of how to use something like StreamYard and how you can uh, use it to interact with your audiences. Um, I've run events where we've had several hundred people watching and you can you can see them and it makes you feel like it is an event. Sometimes if you're doing something on Zoom, um, you might not get the same interaction, but because of something like the comments that you can bring on screen, um, it makes it feel much more like an event. Um, we've still got a little bit of time, so this is just a chance to have any questions or a discussion about how this sort of thing works. Does anybody have any questions about the use of something like StreamYard? I'll check the q and I'll check the chat. Is it something that anyone's used before? I'd like to know if anyone else has used it in the past. Nope, Rachel, and that you haven't used it before. Is it something that, uh, for the people who are here, is it something you're interested in like, trying out in the future? Or are you just interested in a little bit more about how these, these things work? Adam, do you have ideas of how you would want to use it? Also about my camera setup. up. Um, Rich, amazing. Thank you. I'm glad that it was a clear run through. And of course, if you have any other questions, you can get in touch uh, with me. I think my details are part of the, the delegates lineup as well. Um, camera setup. Um, so I am using uh, a live streaming camera called a Mevo. So Mevo, M-E-V-O, um, which uh, connects to my phone, which means that I can move move around the the um, the framing just using my phone which allows me to to get the framing that i've got here it's a wide angle lens but i can consign it to the space that i want it to be in in terms of lighting i have the fader lights on the wall behind me which i love and i will never get rid of i then have two colored lights as well so they're kind of purpley pink are two up lighters that i have on the floor which are aiming at the wall which allows me to be separated out from that from the background um, in terms of lights on me in the front, which are probably the most important part, I on my right hand side I have a key light from Elgato, which is quite a strong LED um, that I can change again using my phone to get the different light balance that I want. And then on my left, I've just got a five pound IKEA lamp that acts as a fill light and takes away some of the shadows on this side of my face. Um, 
so it's taken a little bit of playing with to get used to the the best way for it to run um but it's now at a point that i feel that, like it, it looks really nice and i'm quite happy with how with how it presents itself when it comes to streaming on the on the interwebs uh, but it's really great if you're running wildlife events for the um for the wildlife trust this sort of thing could work really well for you we used it for the festival of nature back in june and it, it was a very very easy um platform for our guests to come on to because you can log on to it using a google chrome or firefox it doesn't hugely like microsoft edge and um, so most people can get access to it fairly swiftly and there's not a lot for your guests to do when they come online they just need to to click the button and make sure the camera and the microphone are on and they're set to go um, we did a live stream from uh bristol zoo as well uh, from wild place um, we had a feeding with uh, giraffes um, which was a totally different experience as well um, so we had an interviewer who was in their home and we had the guests who were live on site at the zoo uh, with the giraffes as well um, and because they could just use their phone to to access it it meant they were able to get access to a whole new experience for our audience that they might not otherwise have been able to do and it takes things like the facebook lives which are great they're fine but they they don't have the same functionality they don't look quite as nice um, and same with periscope for twitter you can't really edit them in any way to make them look a little bit better whereas using something like this third-party software allows you to make the the stream look just that little bit better so i'm glad that it looks good for you um, and if you get any any other queries or questions do send us a, a direct message is there a recording of the wild place live stream you did there is um let me see can i find it i should be able to find it um, and as you we might expect some of the some of the wi-fi was like a little a little bit patchy but that was the, the nature of being in, in a in a place that perhaps didn't have the best wi-fi but it didn't ruin the the experience at all okay it's in this playlist somewhere I will find it and I will add it into the chat. I can't find it quite so easily just now. Ah, meet the giraffes with Wild Place Project. There we go. So if you want to look at how that works, um, it was in there. Um, so you get an idea of how that looked in, in real life practice. Right, folks, we have 10 minutes before the session due to end. Um, oh, there's another Q&A question. What are people asking? Uh, Nicholas saying, really helpful. Thank you. I'm really glad that it has been. Uh, Mike, do you have any camera recommendations? So cameras are something that people do stress over um, and looking for the right camera for you um, it really depends on what your main purpose is. For a long time, I used a phone, um, a phone that was mounted onto a little tripod. Um, I'll show you how that looks. So I used a 12 pound um, tripod, which is it was basically a modified um, selfie stick like this. Um, and then had my phone attached into it. And that was good enough for live streaming. It really was. Um, when it comes to going that little bit, little bit fancier, the one that I have, the Mevo, is very, very good. Um, extremely high quality. Um, it will stream in 1080, uh, 1080p and record in 4K as well. So if I'm recording using StreamYard, we'll get a 4K resolution. Um, but if I'm streaming live, it's not quite, not quite that quality. You might want to go down the route of something like a DSLR as well if you want to get really, really crisp, clear quality. And there's loads and loads of options. But if you've just got a phone, it is more than good enough. And definitely don't feel like you need to go and get the most expensive high-end cameras to get really high quality. You don't. Um, it's more just about what you put in front of that camera that, that makes a difference. Um, lighting being probably more important than the quality of the camera. Hope that helps. But thank you, folks. Um, I really hope that this has been useful and I hope you enjoy the rest of Communicate. It's been a great day so far. 
Um, we've got more fireside chats coming at three o'clock, so this will be a nice chance to go and grab a coffee, grab a wee tea break. Um, and yeah, any other questions, you can fire them in. Um, if anybody wants to come on camera and ask a question, then you can do that as well. Just um, request to share your audio or your video. Otherwise, thank you so much, folks.